everyone and welcome to our video tutorial for this unicorn headpiece that you can see Melba modeling here and she's ready to go. So I hope you enjoy it. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Ready to go? Good girl. Okay, so to make this unicorn horn, you'll need to choose your yarn. Now, I've made this project with a few different types of yarn, and I'll show you the the, um, the yarns, or I'll show you the, the horns that I've made with different yarns in a moment. But today, for the filming, I'm using this gold metallic tape yarn. It's about a two-weight, and uh, yeah, I haven't made this pattern with this yarn before, so I'm going to see how it goes, but I think it's kind of appropriate for a unicorn horn. Now you'll choose a yarn weight that suits this pattern, which is probably going to be a yarn weight four and under. So yeah, it's a, it's a finer weight project, yarn project for sure. Unless you're making a you know a large unicorn horn, but if you're making this for a cat, you want to stay down on the lower weight of yarn. You'll need a crochet hook, and I'm using a three millimeter today. You'll need a darning needle to weave in your ends at the end and do a bit of hand sewing. So that's why I've got this one that's kind of got a sharper point than, than a normal darning needle. You'll need a pair of scissors, a couple of stitch markers or a few, like, maximum four stitch markers, two, two, you know, a few stitch markers anyway could come in handy for this project. You'll need some stuffing to stuff the horn, and I've just got this, um, it's just, you know, a synthetic sort of toy stuffing. So you'll just need something to stuff. You could use yarn scraps, you can use cotton wool, whatever you've got on hand. And you may or may not need a tape measure. Now for this project, you probably won't need a tape measure, but if you want to take a few measurements from your cat, you can certainly do that. If you've got your cap with you it's ideal for this project so you can try as you go and especially around the ears you want to make sure that this fits well okay so let's move on to the techniques you'll need okay so here's the two that I've made previously one is quite a bit longer and thinner than the other so it depends on the yarn that you choose it depends on how long and how wide you want your horn to be obviously you don't want it to be too top heavy but um, you know you can make it a little bit longer and thinner like this one or a bit shorter and stouter like this one so this one here was an acrylic baby yarn and I double stranded it it's kind of in this this uh, pastely colors that look kind of unicorny to me so um, yeah so that was one version and then this one here is a cotton acrylic yarn it's about a four weight and I've used a wool metallic as this strand that I've wound around just to give that little bit of sheen. So we'll be making it in two pieces. So we'll make the main horn part first and then we'll make this base the, with the disc and the ear holes and the ties. So to make the main horn part, we'll be making a magic ring. We'll be using single crochet stitches and we'll be increasing with our single crochet stitches as we move around in a spiral. Uh, we'll be uh, at the base, I'll give you an option to use some double crochet just to raise up one, one area of the base so the horn kind of sits angled slightly forward rather than straight up. For me, an, a unicorn horn should, should sort of sit slightly angled forward um, on the forehead. But, you know, that's just me. And you can choose to leave that out if you want to in the last round. Um, so once we've stuffed our horn and we've wound it into shape, we'll make this disc and the ear holes and the ties. And to do that, we'll be making a magic ring. We'll be increasing in the round with single crochet and then we'll chain to get the size that we need for our ear holes, chaining and slip stitching for the ties. And the, this part here is just all single crochet. So apart from a little bit of double crochet optionally at the back here, the main stitch is single crochet. So finally, we will attach our two parts together. The, we'll attach the horn to the disc and we'll be doing some simple sewing and weaving in our ends to finish off the project. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so we're getting started on the horn and we'll make a magic ring. So however you do that, you do your magic ring. So I do mine. 
So just a reminder, if there's any of these basic techniques that you need to brush up on before you get started, then please do. Now you're going to place three single crochets into your magic ring. So one and two and three. And then you're going to pull your ring closed by pulling on the tail. And we're going to be working in a spiral. So you're going to have to keep count of where you're at. Now you do have the option to use a stitch marker if you want to. So you could place, um, for example, the stitch marker in this last stitch just to help you keep track. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to count. Okay. So if you need to, you know, you could make little notes and just keep track of where you're up to as well. So in this first stitch, we're going to place two. Now it's little, going to be a little bit tight in here for these first couple of rounds, okay? So in this first stitch, you're going to place two single crochets, okay? Now the pattern is going to be that we're going to be increasing in every odd stitch number. Okay, so there we've increased in stitch number one. Then we're going to start our count again, and we're going to place one single crochet in the next one, and two. So it's a little bit tricky just at the beginning here. You just need to pay attention to where you're at. So, and it will fold in on itself so it can be a little bit tricky. So in stitch number two, just one single crochet. So remember we've started our count again. We put this our first increase into that stitch number one and then we start counting from one again. So one, two, and then in the third stitch we're going to make an increase. So in every odd stitch in an increasing manner. Okay, so that's stitch number three, and I've made an increase. Now, I'll try and turn this in the right way if I can. It doesn't matter if I can't do it just now, but it's good if, it's, if I do it as soon as I can, just to turn that in the right way. Okay, so now we're up to increasing in the fifth stitch. So we increased in the first stitch, then the third stitch, and now the fifth stitch. Okay, so we're just working in a spiral. Let me just try and bring those out a little bit more okay so this is the very peak Oop. this is the very peak of the horn okay so stitch number one so we just start our count again one single crochet stitch number two one single crochet stitch number three one single crochet Stitch number four, moving around. And then we come to stitch number five, and so that's going to be our next increase. One, so two single crochets in that stitch number five. So this is how this is going to go. I can move that in the right way now. Now you can close your ring again if you need to. Now we're up to increasing in stitch number seven. So we start our count again. So one and just work away from your tail, two. So as I said, a little bit fiddly at this beginning part, but once you're off and running, it gets much easier. That's stitch number three. Stitch number four. Single crochet, stitch number five, stitch number six, and then stitch number seven is our next increase. One and two stitches in that same stitch number seven. So this is how this goes, okay? So you just keep increasing in every odd stitch in an increasing fashion. So we've just increased in stitch number seven. So our next increase is in stitch number nine, of course. So start your count again. So one and two and three. 
Just be careful you don't miss a stitch or that you don't skip a stitch. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And seven, eight. So this time we're increasing in stitch number nine. So that's my next stitch, and we place an increase in that stitch number nine. Okay, now do a couple more rounds so increase in stitch number 11 next and then in perhaps in stitch number 13 but we're going to stop soon and just do a little bit of stuffing before we move too much further okay so i'm going to go i'm going to go round and increase actually what you can do is you can at any point you want to you can stuff that that tail down inside just make sure that it's pulled nice and tight to close your ring you can if you want to. Now, I don't bother for a project like this, but if you want to, you can turn your work back inside out and do a little bit of weaving in with your with your tail end. Like I said, I just make sure that it's nice and closed, and then I just stuff my tail down into the, into the um, you know, where it's going to be stuffed. So I don't bother to weave in my tail end here. But if you feel like you want to secure it, Turn your work back inside out, do a little bit of sewing just around the center, the, the beginning of the magic ring, just to secure that tail if you're feeling a bit nervous about it coming undone. Okay, I'm not going to demonstrate that here, but if, you, if that's what you want to do, then go ahead. And so I'll do that off camera. I'm going to increase, I'm going to do two more rounds. I'm going to increase in stitch number 11, and then I'm going to increase in stitch number 13. And then I'm going to come back and we'll do some, some a little bit of stuffing just to make sure that this end part is stuffed well. Okay, so I'm just going to pause here. And, oops, and I'm going to just do a little bit of stuffing here. Now, if you go too far, you might find it a little bit tricky to stuff right from from the bottom so I would kind of stuff as you go just pull that out I'll just use my my crochet hook to stuff it's a little it gets a little bit tricky to stuff this this very top part right from the end it's even see it's even slightly tricky now so I'm just going to push that in with the bottom of my hook And this, I'm not a massive fan of this toy stuffing, if I'm honest. It's, uh, you know, it's very lightweight, but it's not super easy to stuff with. Let's try the end of my, I usually stuff with cotton wool. I find that much easier. But let's just continue on with this. There we go, that's a little bit better. So just stuffing, stuffing that end portion. Don't overstuff, but, you know, just make it quite nice and firm. And then we're going to continue on. So I've just increased in stitch number 13. So I'm going to keep going for a few more rounds. So I'll be increasing in stitch number 15 next, stitch number 17, 19, etc. So go ahead and complete a few more rounds and perhaps until you feel like you need to do a little bit more stuffing. And of course you're paying attention to the size that you want for your unicorn horn and um, you know how long you want it to be and how wide it will end up. So just pay attention to that as you go. So go ahead and do a few more rounds increasing in those odd stitches in increasing increments in your odd stitches and I'll, I'll do that and I'll see you soon. Okay, so there I've just increased in stitch number 23 and I've done a little bit of extra stuffing as well. So I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to make, as I said at the beginning, I'm not going to make, or I think I said, I'm not going to make this one as long as this one here. And this one's kind of going to be, my grey one's going to be my in-between one. So I'm not going to make it as big as this one either. So I'm going to make a smaller version for this one but I want to go for a few more rows so you'll decide how big how wide you want yours to be 
and you'll keep going until with those increases until you reach the size that you want. So I'm going to increase. I think I'll probably go for you know another two, maybe three rounds. So uh, I'll I'll keep going. You do the same, and I'll see you soon. Okay, so I've just increased in the twenty seventh stitch there. So I might just stuff a little bit more, and I think I'm getting pretty close to how big I want this this horn to be. So you can see it's quite a bit smaller than my others, but I think I'm going to run with a smaller one for this version. So now once you, you've got it as big as you want it, we're going to do that optional, um, that optional final round. Now for this round, once you get, you know, you've increased, you've made it as big as you want it to be, you can mark that last stitch. Okay, just to just to keep track of that last stitch. So at the back here, so this for me is going to be the back, and probably for you too. So you're going to you've got the option here of adding in the next few stitches, adding some double crochets. Now the first one, just add a half double crochet. And I didn't mention actually at the beginning, but just add a half double crochet in there just to transition from your single crochets to your double crochets. It's not a big deal if you don't add it, but then we'll add a few double crochets across the back here. So two, let's say three, and four. So this will just give, as I said before, it'll just allow your, allow your horn to just sit forward slightly on your cat's head. Okay. And so then once you've done, you know, a few double crochets across the back there, and you know there's no set number just make your next one a half double crochet just to transition down and then single crochet all the way back to your stitch marker one and two three I'm gonna have to untangle my yarn so I'm gonna untangle my yarn it's just got a little knot in there and then do my single crochets all the way around to my stitch marker and I'll meet you in a moment Okay, so once you get back round to your stitch marker, you can just remove that. And you can just slip stitch into that last stitch to finish off. Now, you've ne you need to, from here, we want to leave a long tail for wrapping. Okay, so if you're using the same yarn as your main yarn to wrap, then, you know, leave enough to wrap. Okay, this one here, I used a different yarn. So I didn't need to leave a long tail. So you get to choose if you're wrapping with the same yarn to wrap and shape your horn. And if you are, leave a, you know, a long tail that's got enough to do that wrap. So I'm going to leave, let's leave about, I don't know, 20 centimetres there. And then enough just to uh, weave in as well. And actually, if you're not, if you're not, uh, you know, if you're not wrapping with the same yarn, you can leave a long tail anyway because you can use it to sew your horn onto your disc. Okay, so yeah, either way, you know, it's a good idea to have a longish tail. Okay, so you've got something that looks like this now, and you'll see that with those increases, it kind of gives you a kind of a natural, a natural twist. So see if you can find that natural twist. Yeah, there's mine that way. Sort of gives you a natural twist that we're going to work with. So mine's quite small. You, your, your twist might be a little bit more pronounced. But you can see it kind of runs around. Perhaps it's not so visible on mine, but it might be more visible on yours. And what you're going to do is you're just going to kind of follow that natural twist. Actually, that's I've pulled it a bit tight there. And you're going to wrap your horn to get that kind of horn shape. And you can wrap it, you can pretty much wrap it however it works. You can wrap, you know, lots of times. Just hold it down at the base so it doesn't pull up the base too much. But you want to pull it tight to get that shape. Okay, so once you've got your wrap, just going to thread your darning needle. Just see if you can hold on to that at the same time. Just don't let 
go of your wrap. Actually, you could thread. You could thread before you do the wrap. Okay, so once you've got your wrap, just make sure you can sort of pull it without pulling. Actually, I've lost it there. I have to redo it. It's okay. No big deal. So you just shape it how you think looks like a unicorn horn. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. Yeah. And then once you've got your wrap shape, bring it up to the top and you're just going to feed, feed your yarn up and through the top. So you've got a little bit of leverage to pull, to pull it a little bit further into shape. Again, don't let it, you know, don't let it misshape down here. Now, if you're not using the same yarn, what you can do, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can just wrap, you know, wrap the strand. Or what you can do is you can tie your new strand of your new yarn onto this tail end just at the base here. You can just do a little simple knot and then wrap from there. Okay? So, you know, just, just be a little bit creative. And actually, maybe I can show you on this one. So what I did, you might be able to see the little knot. See, I just knotted down at the base there but it's at the back so it doesn't matter I just knotted down at the base and used that new yarn to wrap with okay so there I think that's looking pretty good and then once you've pulled this nice and tight without misshaping and you've shaped it how you want it to look then you'll just feed it back well, actually, what you can do is you can skip over. It's maybe a good idea not to go all the way straight down. Depending, or you, you want to try and hide your tail, obviously. Because my yarn is the same colour, it's not going to be a big deal if I just kind of skip over the top and go down. So you want to go back down through some stuffing, bring it out. Bring it out down, down a bit further down the, the horn. Let me just make sure that's nice and... My hands are a little bit slippery. I might need my little piece of rubber. Yeah, I'm going to just pause here and get my little piece of rubber glove so I can pull that needle through. So if you haven't seen this before, I've just got an off cut of a rubber glove that broke. And because, it, you know, it's quite a hot climate here in Marseille, I uh, sometimes get slippery hands, sweaty, slippery hands. So I just use that to help me pull my... Pull my needle through. Okay, so you want to pull it through so it's tight, but not, you know, not changing the shape of your unicorn horn. And then you can weave it through again, but I think I think that's enough. And I'm just going to snip, snip that off here. And then you can just push any remaining remaining remainder of the tail through, just through back into the stuffing there. And of course, if you need to do a little bit more stuffing, you'll do a little bit more stuffing. Just to make that, you know, nice and plump. And that's your horn part done. So you will have shaped it how, how you like. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Okay, so we're going to move on now to making the base and the ear holes with the ties. Okay, so to make the base, you'll make a magic ring once again. And this time we're going to place six single crochets into the magic ring. So that's one, and two, three, four, five, and oops, and six. Okay, so then you're going to close your ring. And this time we're going to not work in a spiral, we're going to slip stitch into our first stitch. Okay, so find your first stitch, make a slip stitch in there. Oops, I've pulled that a little bit tight, but that's okay. There we go, slip stitch into there. Now here's where your stitch marker might be 
uh, be handy for you, especially if you're not familiar with, you know, not super familiar with increasing in the round. And if you need to brush up on increasing in the round, just check out a video on YouTube and, you know, just familiarize yourself with increasing in the round. But, you know, a stitch marker can be handy, especially if you, you know, you, you haven't had heaps of experience doing this. So now there's a couple of different ways to increase in the round. And if you've got your way, you do it your way. Otherwise, what I find it the easiest to do is I ignore this stitch that we've slip, just slip stitched into, okay? And then I move to the what I call my first stitch, okay? So not the stitch you've slip stitched into, the next stitch. And you'll place, just as a classic, in a line with a classic increase in the round, you'll place two single crochets in that first stitch. And then two single crochets in each of your stitches. So we're going to double the number of stitches to 12. All the way around to your stitch marker. And your stitch marker will be your last stitch. Two. And that's 10. And then I'm going to remove my stitch marker and work into that last stitch. Will give me my 12. One and two. And you can replace that stitch marker in that last stitch. And then you'll jump over the chain. And if you need to count, you'll count backwards. It's always easier to count backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And locate your first stitch, slip stitch into it. Okay. So actually that, yeah, sorry, move your stitch marker to that last stitch. Sorry, I put it in one too early. So in that very last stitch, okay, stitch marker. Okay, so you'll keep increasing in the round until you get the size of the base that you need for your horn. So I need to go for a couple more rounds. So chain one, and increasing in the round, we the next round is increasing in the first stitch and then sorry beg your pardon. So for round three, increasing in the round, we'll be in the working in the first stitch and just placing a single crochet in that first stitch. One single crochet in that first stitch. Oh, my hands are very sweaty today. It's quite warm in Marseille today. And then in the next stitch, we'll do an increase, two single crochets. So that's the pattern for round three. One in the next, and then an increase, two in the next. One in the next, and then two in the next. So the Pattern is one, two, one, two, one, two, all the way around until you have 18 stitches. Because we started with six stitches, each round we do will increase by six stitches. So I'm going to finish off this round. And for each round, the pattern fits exactly in the round, okay? So you'll finish off, because our first stitch was just a single crochet, one single crochet, your last stitch will be two single crochets, okay? So move, move around, come round to your stitch marker, and I'll meet you there. Okay, so I've got my two stitches left. That's the stitch before my stitch marker. So that's a single, and then the next stitch with the stitch marker is two single crochets to finish out this round. One and two and slip stitch to join so skip over the chain and then slip stitch to the first stitch and if you need to count backwards just to make sure you've got the right stitch then do so and then insert your st stitch marker sorry i hope i didn't confuse you before so once reinsert your stitch marker after you've slip stitched okay so to make sure that you've got that last stitch 
Okay, so now you'll decide how, if, you know, if you want to go for another round, another two rounds, depending on the size that you want for the base um, that fits between the ears. So I'm pretty much perfect there. So I've got 18 stitches now. So I'm pretty much perfect for the size that I need, but I think I'm going to go, will I make it this size here? Maybe I'm going to go for one more round. Okay, so you get to make those decisions. Just check, you know, the base of your unicorn horn, and it'll be different for everyone. You know, you might need another round. You might need another two rounds to get to the size that you need, depending on how big your, your horn is. So I'm going to go for one more round. So you'll chain your one. In that first stitch, one single crochet. In the next stitch, one single crochet. And then for this round, we're increasing in the third stitch. So two single crochets in that next stitch. So the pattern for this round is one, one, two, one, one, two. So one single crochet in the next stitch and the next stitch, and then two single crochets in the next. So I'll, I'll be increasing here to 24, and you go for this round, I'll meet you at the end here, and you might continue on, I think I'm, this is going to be my last round, you might continue on for another round, and um, you know, that's up to you, you can make that judgement at the end of this round, so I'll see you at the end of round, what are we, round four, one, two, three, yeah, round, at the end of round four. Okay, so I'm just round at my last stitch here, just remove that stitch marker, place my two single crochets in that last stitch, one and two, and then I'll slip stitch in my first stitch to join, and that's going to be plenty big enough for me, yeah, that's going to be big enough. So now I'm going to, so we're going to create the ear holes here. Okay, so you'll chain one. Now, what you'll need to do, um, you can mark your stitch if you want to, your last stitch if you want to, but you, you perhaps don't need to from here. But depending on how many stitches you've got in your round, you'll work out how big you're going to make your ear holes. Okay, so let's use my 24 as an example. So I want two ear holes, so let's just bring in my other one. So I want two two ear holes, so I want this side and this side where the stitches are unworked, and I want this area here at the back and this area here at the front that is worked, that attaches this part to the disc. Okay? So what I'm going to do for my 24, I'm going to divide that 24 into three. Okay? So essentially I've got three areas. I've got two ear holes and then I've got front and back. So two, one ear hole, one ear hole, front and back. So if I divide my 24 by 3, that gives me 8. So it means I've got 8 stitches for my each of my ear holes and then I've got 8 stitches to divide between front and back. So that will be 4 at the front, 4 at the back. Now what you can do, so I'm going to take that stitch marker out I don't need that now. You can mark with your stitch markers where you're going to start chaining for your ear holes. Okay, so let's say I'm going to do four stitches. So you can mark. So you might have a different, you know, a different number of stitches and you'll have to work this out for yourself. But actually, let's just take my hook out of there for a moment. So one, so one, two, three, four. So from so that will be my fourth stitch. So if I just mark that next one, that will be where my ear hole will start. Okay? So if you remember, I've got eight for my each ear hole, and then four at the front, four at the back. That gives me my 24 stitches. So if I count my eight, so I've got one, my stitch marker, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then I just want to mark the next one. Okay, so I've got my eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And that will be where I will join back onto the disc after I've chained for my ear holes. Okay, so let's move on a little bit and you'll see what I mean. But it might be worth marking that. And you can mark it on both sides if you want to. I'll just mark it on one side for now. 
So I've chained my one and then I'm going to place one single crochet in the next four stitches. Two, three and four. And now I'm going to, because I'm at that, that first stitch marker, I'm going to start to chain for my ear holes, okay? So I'm going to start chaining, and this is where it might be worth trying it onto your cat. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I'm going to chain at least 30. So you'll work out, now this is, you know, you might want to sit it on your cat and check how big you need your ear holes to be. So I'm going to go ahead and chain 30 and see how that's looking for size. So go ahead and, and make a chain and, you know, you might have a different chain number and you probably will because it will depend on your cat size, your hook size and your yarn that you're using. Okay, so I'm going to go and head and chain 30 and just see how I'm looking from there. So you do the same and I'll see you soon. Okay, so I've got my initial chain of 30 there, and if I was to attach back where my first ear hole ends, that's the size I've got there, and I, I, I know just by looking at that, that's a little bit small for Melba. So, um, you know, you will try that on your cat, and what you can do is just temporarily attach it and see if you've got enough space. The... You know, kind of the more space you've got for the ear holes, the better. So let's, I'm just going to add one, two, that makes 32, 33, and 34. Let's just try an extra four. Now I, because I've, you know, sized Melba so many times, I can kind of eyeball it. Yeah, maybe that's even a bit too much now. And I can, I can compare it to my other one as well. But yeah, no, let's run with, let's run with that. So I've got 34 there. So I'm going to remove my stitch marker and I'll just double check my 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there's my 8. So I'm just going to, oops, I've got that twisted. So make sure you haven't got it twisted. That's not, that's what not to do. And I'll have to count my 8 again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So I'll single crochet over to that next stitch. Once I've left the eight for my ear hole, or you know, you will, you might have left a different number, but there's going to be my first ear hole. Okay, and then at the front, I'll place my four stitches. So that's my first stitch. Three more. Two. Three. And then four. And then I'm going to do, so I've got my front, my front stitches, my back stitches, my first ear hole. And then I'm going to do exactly the same as I did for this first ear hole. So I'm going to chain my 34 and I'll be back once I've done that. Okay, so I've got my second chain there for my second ear hole. And then what I'm going to do is find that first stitch so I can skip my chain and that first stitch I'm just going to slip stitch to join for my second ear hole. And that gives me my 24 stitches and my, my two ear holes. Okay. Take all of those stitch markers out now. Now we've got one more round left. So we're going to create, we're going to add a little bit of extra, you know, an extra bit, bit of width to the ear holes. And we're also going to chain for our ties. So let's just show you again on this one. So we just add a little bit of extra width here. And then chain, oh, it's not focusing. Okay. So we add this extra width here. And then we just chain for the ties and we'll slip stitch up the ties and then we'll continue around. Do the same on the other side and then continue around to the back. So to, to, to the, our starting place. Okay, so chain your one. And here's, here again you might want to take your stitch markers and mark where you want to start chaining for your ties. Now, you can mark exactly halfway in your chain if you want to. Let's do it on this first one. 
So you can mark exactly halfway. What I tend to do, so I've got 34, stitches, 34 chains there. What I tend to do is, is um, just bring my ties just slightly forward. So I have a slightly longer area at the back than at the front. So the ties can kind of come down, you know, underneath the chin. So if I've got 34 chains there, so halfway 17, so I think probably I'm going to, you know, start chaining it around chain 18. So let's just see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Actually, let's make it chain 19, just bring it slightly forward. And then you can mark on your second one as well, just so you know exactly where you're at. And then you'll just single crochet until you get there. Okay, so that first stitch, place a, so you've chained one, place your first stitch back into that, that same stitch that you slip stitched into to get your four across the back here, two, three, and then four. And then in each chain, you're going to place a single crochet until you get to the area where you want to start chaining for your ties. So keep working around until you reach that area, reach that place, that's that chain or your stitch marker. And I'll meet you around there and we'll start chaining for the, the ties together. Okay, so I've done my single crochets down to my stitch marker and I'll just take that stitch marker out and work into that chain. And then I'm going to chain for my ear, for my under chin ties. So one, two, three. Now you'll just chain, it's an arbitrary number, you'll chain as many as you need to chain. I will probably chain around 20, 25, but you'll chain as many as you need to tie either a bow or a little knot underneath the chin. Okay, so count your chain so you can duplicate it on the second side. And so I've got three, four, five. So I'm going to chain perhaps about 25 and I'll see how that's looking and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I've just checked this on Melba. I've got 25 there and I'm just going to add an extra couple. So that makes 27. Actually, let's make it 28. So, you know, you'll just, you'll chain however much you need, however, and however long you need. And, uh, you know, if you've got your cat with you, good idea just to check it out. So we're just, all we're going to do is skip that first chain and we're just going to slip stitch down the length of the chain. Now if you want to, and I, I didn't mention this at the beginning, but if you want to, you could switch over to a slightly smaller crochet hook here if you want finer ties. My yarn's pretty fine anyway, so you know, I'm, I'm cool with just using the same, the same size hook, but you know, if you wanted to drop down a size or two, you, sh you sure could. So you'll just continue slip stitching all the way down your tie, your first tie, until you get back to this area here. And I'll meet you when we get back here. Okay, so I'm just placing my last slip stitch in that last chain there. And then once you get back to this main area, right, just at this in the ear hole here, you'll single crochet back into that same stitch that you started chaining from, okay? And then you'll then just place one single crochet. Oops, am I in that chain? Oh yes, I'm in that chain properly. You'll place one single crochet in the chains until you get back to here. And then of course, one single crochet in each of those stitches. And you'll repeat um, in a mirror exactly what you've done. So you might want to mark where you're going to start chaining for your your tie. So I did, I can't remember, was it 19? Yeah, anyway, I'll, I'll recount those and I'll just make sure that I mark over here. So I, I uh, put my tie in exactly the same place on the other side, just forward. So this is my front area here, just slightly forward of center. And then I'm going to work my way all the way around with single crochet. Once I've made my second tie exactly as I did my first, I'm going to then single crochet and finish off here. So I'll meet you back at the end of this round. Okay, so I'm just adding in my last few stitches 
at the end of this round. So you can see that I've done my second air hole, my second tie. And I'm just, I think I've got one more stitch there. One more chain. Get in there. It's a little bit tight in that last one. And then I'm just going to slip stitch to my first stitch. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull through. Tie off. So I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave enough. Oh, Melba's got my yarn. I'm going to leave enough for sewing. So I'm going to snip off a good length, leaving enough for sewing. And there's my base with my ear holes. So now that all that's left to do is attach our horn to our base, like so. So you'll take your darning needle and your end and we're just going to do a simple simple sewing to attach this this together so you'll want that back part to sit at the back obviously and you might need to if you've if you've got your disc just slightly larger than your base of your horn you might need to just work your yarn over over to where your first stitches will be. So you might just need to work through like I do. So I'm just working into some of those stitches. Let's see if I've got, if I'm through enough. So obviously you want that back area that you've raised up to sit at the back of your, at the back of the disc. And then you're just going to take, so simple hand sewing techniques. So pick up a stitch in your, in your base and then a stitch. So I just tend to pick up the front loop or the loop closest to me. And I'm going to think I'm going to need my little, my little rubber again. But you'll just go, you'll just go around just picking up a stitch on the base and then picking up a stitch on the horn and just just simple just simple hand sewing to attach those two together okay so i'm going to go ahead and finish that off camera i'm just going to just sew that around pick up one on the base pick up that front loop And so through. So I'm going to finish that off camera and I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so I've got my my horn sewn onto my base there. So I'm just going to finish this off by weaving in this end. Now you you know you can weave it in wherever you want to. can weave it in if you go back through you can weave it into the bottom here or what you can do which I find easier is you can just come up into the up into the horn and bring it through up and through and pop it out somewhere just anywhere Need the rubber again just bring that that tail through And then you can just snip off, snip off the excess. I'll just get my scissors, they've just dropped to the floor. So just snip off, and you can, you know, you can work this through a couple of times if you want to, but once is enough for me. Once it's gone up through the stuffing, it's enough. And then just pop the, any remaining, remaining, remainder back into the, back into the horn. There you go. Sorry, my brain is not working super well today. I've had a cold, and I'm at that stage where I'm just uh, I'm just blocked. <laughs> so my apologies that my brain is not working super well today. So with this last this last 
this last tail, just bring it up and through. That's the easiest way to, to dispatch with those tails. Up and through and snip off, snip off the excess once again and then you're done. Oh, I like this smaller one. That's going to look super cute on Melba. So there's your, there's your little unicorn horn finished. So <laughs> it's kind of funny. Let's see my three, three together. So I've got the smaller one, there's the medium one, and I've got this long, thin one. So you can make this, you know, you can make this your own. So thanks so much for watching. I always appreciate you being here with me and uh, perhaps learning a few new crochet techniques and just having a bit of fun with your cat. So, uh, you know, as always, I'd love to see your photos of your little kitty unicorn. So please send those along to catventurous.community at gmail.com or you can tag us on social media at catventurous.com crochet. So uh, yeah, hope you've had fun with this one and I hope to see you soon. Okay, bye. Cutest little unicorn ever. Hi sweet pea. Yeah. Hi everyone and welcome to our video. Oh, we're a bit. One more member? Should we try this way? Just one more. Just one more.